All right, this is your brother Aisha Yard coming at you with another lesson. First off, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstones who learn this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Aqua that's listening and learning. Today's video is going to be entitled Disobeying the Lord equals death. Disobeying the Lord equals death. Now I got inspired to do this lesson because I was reading the, the, the book of First Kings, the 13th chapter, and I'm going to start off by reading that, all right? But um, I was reading it, and of course, it was a certain man that uh, disobeyed the Lord. He didn't do what the Lord commanded him to do. And later on in the future, the man was met by a lion, and the lion tore his ass up, man. Tore him up. All right, and the first thing that I thought about, of course, is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. All right, because the Most High is scary, man. The scriptures tell you that He is a terrible power. He is a terrible power. We should always be afraid of Yahweh Bashem and Yahweh Shai at all times. All right. Then um, the second thing that I thought of was, you can't get out of your judgment. You know, there's no such thing as free will. There's no such thing as making your own future or anything like that. Because a lot of people feel like they can get away with wickedness. A lot of people feel like they can do whatever they want to do in this world. And they feel like nothing is going to happen to them for what they're doing. And that's completely false. The Mosiah is getting ready to visit the earth, man. Yahweh Shah himself is getting ready to visit the earth. And even before it ends. A lot of people are going to receive the judgment of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Because just like in the scripture, like I said, and I'm getting ready to read in 1 Kings, the Most High wasn't down here to put that man to death. He put the spirit upon the lion to be in the right place at the right time. Then he put the spirit upon the lion to, to get his ass, man. The Most High made sure that he was in the right area at the right time. Then the next thing you know, he gave order to the uh, angels on the left hand side to give that order to take his ass and to. Um, um, to Put his ass to death, man. Point blank, period. And then the third thing that I thought about was, of course, was the MOTB, which is the CHIP. And everybody should know what that is by now. All right. That is what's going to um, decide your fate. Because this is a commandment from the Most High. He told all Israelites, and that's speaking to you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. He told all of us not to take it. Because we're coming into a time where... Esau is going to make this thing mandatory. All right. He's going to make this thing mandatory. And you're going to have to man up, look Esau in the face and tell him no. And you're going to have to face the consequences of doing that, man. Because once you do that, you become an enemy of the state. But it don't matter, man. The Mosai told you not to take it. So you have, you have to endure through whatever the Mosai is getting ready to put you through. This is why the scriptures tell us that we're going to all go through our trial of faith we're all going to be tested all right so at the end of the day hey the lord told us not to take it so who are we going to obey are we going to disobey the mosai and obey esau or are we going to disobey quote unquote disobey esau and obey your how about show me how was shot we're going to obey the lord man because just like i'm gonna get ready to read in a little while too it tells you what's going to happen to you if you take it we're coming to very serious times, so we got to take this word seriously, man. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the scriptures. Let's get um, let's get the first Kings, so we can read that. This first Kings chapter thirteen, verse fifteen, and it says, "Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread." And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt eat no bread nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. He said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thy house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. Damn. <laughs> Then it says, so he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. All right. <laughs> and it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came into the prophet that brought him back. 
And he cried unto the man of the Most High that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, For as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy power commanded thee, but camest back, and hast eaten bread, and drunk water in the place of which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread, and drink no water, thy carcass shall not come into the sepulchre of thy fathers. And it came to pass, after he had eaten bread, and after he had drunk, and he saddled for him to ask, I mean the ass, Salachia, to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way, and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way, and the ass stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. <laughs> and behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way, and the lion standing by the carcass, and they came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, It is the man of the Most High who is disobedient unto the word of the Lord. Therefore the Lord hath delivered him unto the lion, which hath torn him and slain him according to the word of the Lord, which he spake unto him. So there you go. The Lord told him, Hey, do not go back to this place. And when you get to this certain area, don't eat or drink. He said, Don't do any of these things, man. And guess what? He went and hearkened to the dude that lied to him, man. He went back, he did eat, he did drink. And the Most High was, he wasn't pleased with that. So the Most High set up this scenario. That's why it says, therefore the Lord had delivered him unto the lion. This is, this is showing you the power of the Lord, man. <laughs> this is really showing you the power of the Lord. He the one that set up this scenario. Here it is. You may be thinking in the back of your mind, like, yeah, you know, all I got to do is just, you know, walk down this block or go up this alley or whatever. You know, I'll be safe and everything like that. You don't know what the Lord is doing. The Lord is, controls all spirits, man. He controls the animals. He controls the people. He controls what happens to to the, uh, to everybody. He controls everybody's actions, their thoughts, all of it, man. Okay, so it's saying right here, he delivered him unto the lion because he was disobedient all right, he didn't listen to the Lord. So the Lord literally set up the scenario where he had that lion go and tear his ass up. For not for not listening and hearkening unto the Lord, man. This is how serious these days are gonna be. Because we're coming into the day of great judgment, man, and the most high is getting ready to bring great death upon this earth. Because he gets he's getting tired of the, he's getting tired of this place, man. Like the scriptures say, he's angry with the wicked every single day. He, he's not pleased with this place. So we're coming to a time where we're literally getting ready to see the power of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. We're going to see certain things happen. We're going to be like, the Lord did that. The Lord did that. And we see certain things. Just like the brothers been bringing out uh, the past few days. When we see certain things, we are not supposed to feel sorry for these people. Because they've been given a warning, man. They've been given a warning. These videos are out left and right. The brothers on the highways and the byways every single day, man. You see brothers going down in the midweek. You know, that's what I, that's what I do. <laughs> go out on Tuesdays, you know. Other brothers go out on Wednesdays, certain brothers on Thursdays. And of course, you see the majority of the brothers on Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. It is what it is, man. So at the end of the day, we have to fear the Lord, all right? And they don't have any excuse for their actions, man. They're not going to have any excuse, all right? Let's get Baruch. Um, Let's get Baruch. Let's get Baruch chapter 1, and we're going to go to 13. And it says, pray for us also unto the Lord our power, for we have sinned against the Lord our power, and until this day the fury of the Lord and its wrath is not turned from us. And you shall read this book, which you have, which, which we have sent unto you, to make confession in the house of the Lord upon the feast and solemn days. And you shall say to the Lord, our power belongeth righteousness, but unto us the confusion of faces, as it come to pass this day, unto them of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to our kings, and to our princes, and to our priests, and to our prophets, and to our fathers. For he has sinned before the Lord, is the key, and disobeyed him, and have not hearkened unto the voice of the Lord our power, to walk in the commandments that he gave us openly, since the day that the Lord brought our forefathers out of the land of Egypt, until this present day, 
We have been disobedient unto the Lord our power, and we have been negligent and not hearing his voice. Our people do not even want to hear what the Lord has to say, man. These people have so much pride and so much self-will, so to speak. <laughs> so much quote-unquote heart. They think they're so smart, they think they're so slick and everything. They don't even want to hear the word of the Lord, man. Here it is. We bring it out to them. They, just, they neglect it. They be like, I don't, I don't want no part of this, man. No part of this. That's 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 some bullshit. I'm just gonna say it how it is. That's some bullshit. You literally gonna reject the words of the Lord, man? You gonna literally because when you when you say these things to the brothers, man, this is not this is not you disrespecting us or hurting not feelings or anything like that, man. You are literally spitting in the most high's face. This is his word, man. We are just his vessels. We are just, you know, the people that he set up to bring out this word. But ultimately, this is him speaking through us. And this is him bringing out the word, man. So when you say certain things, when you do certain things that goes against his commandments, statutes, and laws, and what he said, like I said, you're making the most high mad, man. Point blank, period. All right. That's why it says right here in verse 20. Wherefore, the evils cleaved unto us and the curse which the Lord appointed by Moses his servant at the time that he brought our fathers out of the land of Egypt to give us a land that floweth with milk and honey like as it is to see this day. Since we were negligent, since we didn't want to listen, since we didn't want to hearken to the Lord our power, he had evils cleave unto us, meaning these, these curses, man, was going to hold us with a tight grip, man. We were going to feel these curses. We still feel these curses to this very day. We are still dying. We're still getting sick. We still broke. <laughs> we have no order. We actually live by our bywords. A lot of our people love being the bywords. That y'all love being niggas. Y'all love living that life, man. Y'all love it. Y'all don't want to leave it alone. These evils cleave unto us, man. Broken families, drug addicts, game banging, whoredom. <laughs> Selling out everything, man. All of these things is, is happening unto us because we didn't want to listen to the Lord our power. Just think about how much beautiful the Lord, I mean, uh, where well, the Lord is beautiful within the spirit, yeah. But just think about how much more beautiful the world would be. That's what I meant to say. If we actually started following the commandments, statutes, and laws. Now we understand that we can't do that on this side. So just, you know, so people won't get it confused. We can't follow the commandments, statutes, and laws perfectly on this side. This is why Judges 5 and 11 says what it says when we rehearse the righteous acts. We're just rehearsing right now. It's impossible to keep the law in captivity, point blank, period. All right, but we understand in the kingdom that we will keep the law perfectly because the law will be written in our inward parts. But just to say, if we did follow the commandments, statutes, and laws, just think about how much more clean and pure the earth would be. It would be nice, man. But, you know, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. And this is what the wicked does. This is what the, the wicked has produced. It has produced filthiness, pollution. Physically, spiritually, everything, man. <laughs> and this is what we get. Our people follow the ways of the wicked. Now look at us, man. We in the worst condition that we, we have ever been since the, since the beginning of time, man. We are in the worst position ever. But this is why, you know, we got to fear the Lord. We have to listen to the Lord, man. And this is why I'm going to get this too. Because like I said, this is what popped up in my mind after I read that. Because this is what the Most High told us to do. Because we coming into this time, y'all. We coming into this time right here. Revelation 13 and 15. And it says, He had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Esau is going to come down with that great wrath according to Revelation 12 and 12. All right. Whoever doesn't take the CHIP, they are going to be put to death, man. That's why some of us are going to become martyrs. But a lot of us are actually going to survive what Esau is getting ready to do with us because we're going to have what? The power of the Lord with us, man. The Lord is going to be with us. Just like he caused the scenarios to have evil happen to people. He's going to cause scenarios where he's going to have good happen to the elect. He has a balance, man. He has a balance. He's going to make sure that the elect um, goes through the uh, miracles. All right. 
But verse 16, it says he calls an all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a M-A-R-K in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he had the M-A-R-K or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So we're coming to a time where Esau is going to bring in the digital system. He's going to have you put something in your hand on your forehead. And this is going to be the way that you pay and for everything that you do and sell everything that you um may have there's no it's not going to be a such thing as side hustles or anything anymore man esau is going to be able to track uh track everything that you do everything that you do he's going to know when you left the house he's going to know when you got in the car he's going to know when you went to the grocery store who you made transactions with what did you buy all of that man this is the type of world that esau is getting ready to set up but what did the most i say the most I said we're not supposed to take this thing right because this is what it says in Revelation 14 and um and 9 and it says and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his M-A-R-K in his forehead or in his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the most high which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. This is a nuclear destruction. So once again, the Mosai is going to set up this huge, extreme scenario, man. Where a lot of people are going to take the M-A-R-K, right? They're going to take the M-A-R-K and they're going to feel like what? Once again, they okay. They're going to be able to go to the stores and buy all their video games, their food, their essentials, all these different things. You know, um, take care of their families and children and all these different things, right? People going to be at the bars or whatever. People are going to be getting it in in the bedroom. <laughs> be at the movies, chilling outside. You know, like everything is all good, right? Then the next thing you know, you're going to hear them alarms. <laughs> They're going to tell you to get to the nearest safe zone, man. Get to the nearest building or basement or whatever the case may be because the missiles are being shot over here. And a lot of people are going to scramble. And the thing is, a lot of people are going to remember the words of the prophets, too. They're going to remember. They're going to be like, damn, those dudes was warning us about this. Now, look, we here. And they ain't going to have nowhere to go. And guess what? The Mosai is going to set it up to where you can't escape because the only way you can escape that nuclear destruction is by what? The so-called UFOs, which are the chariots of the Lord, getting beamed up. That's the only way you can get away from it. You can't fly out of here. You can't drive to the nearest city. You can't get on the boat. You can't, you can't do none of that shit, man. This place, is, this whole country is getting ready to be burned up, man. The waters, everything, the rivers, all of that, man, within one hour. So what you going to do? You're going to suffer your, your fate. You're going to suffer the judgment of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. Why? Because you disobeyed the Lord. <laughs> you disobeyed the Lord, man. So since you disobeyed the Lord, that's going to be your faith. So this is the spirit that we want to be in at the end of this thing, man. We're going to end it with this. Psalms uh, 38 and 1. And it says, a psalm of David to bring to remembrance. <laughs> bring to remembrance. Remember this. O Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath. Neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. We can just end it with that, man. It says, Neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. And David, Dave, King David's like, Look, Lord, remember me, please. I've been hearkening to your words. I've been being the best king, best prophet, best man of the Lord that I possibly can be, man. Please remember me in the days of, the, of, of trouble. Please do not allow me to go through the judgment that two thirds of our people are getting ready to go through. He said, don't, don't have me get caught up in your hot displeasure. Hot displeasure. This is why when you read the book of um, Exodus, I believe, it always tells you that the most I always say, yeah, let my anger wax hot. Wax hot, man. You gotta, you just gotta kind of just look through things through his eyes, so to speak. Because, you know, we can't completely understand the most high, and we never will. But at the end of the day, you know, um, you know, you can just kind of see or feel what he's going through when he looks down here and see all of the wickedness that's going on, man. You know, it's just kind of like uh, when you boil that uh, 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 a pot of tea 
And then next thing you know, when the tea is, is ready, you know, you hear the whistle and then it's boiling and the top is looking looking like it's getting ready to pop off at any minute. <laughs> That's the most hot right now. That's yeah, how about some of y'all shot right now, man? They ready to bring this place down, man. They are ready to bring this place down. And we ready to, you know, to see this place go down as well. So at the end of the day, we don't want to get caught up in that hot displeasure, man. We want to make it up out of here, all right? So what are we going to do? We're going to obey the Lord. That's all we got to do. we just going to obey the Lord, man. Do what he told you to do. The elder Corral from Chicago, he told me this a long time ago. He was just like, you feel good when you do the right thing. <laughs> when he said that, it was, it was you know, it, it ain't nothing too deep or anything like that. But it was, it was real and straight to the point. He's like, you feel good when you do the right thing. You know? So we got to do the right thing, man. And the right thing is to obey the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Point blank period, man. That's it. All right. So I'm going to end it right there. So, hey, I hope this is edifying. So with that, I'm going to say, call Halayim Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rekakwadash. Double honor to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Aqua that's listening and learning. And you have a rod to Zod. I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasharala. Keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.